Hello and welcome to the Bumper Extended Edition final part of our stupendously action-packed adventure on the Azamar Request, from Singapore to Dubai, over 17 as amazing nights, a voyage widely referred to as the Spice Route. If you're stuck at home either by choice, by government insistence, by fear or by illness, I really do hope and pray you're coping and have plenty of support from friends, family and nice neighbours. We will get through this together and I hope this little bit of escapism you're about to watch makes you smile a little and it helps you take your mind off it all just for a little while. We all need that right now, don't we? Anyway, that said, let's escape. It's always said that you should save the best till last. There's even a song about it. So what a finale we have for you as we explore two cities of extreme contrasts, Mumbai and Dubai. With a little bit of Muscat in Oman thrown in the middle. Which would capture our hearts? Keep watching. Oh, and please do subscribe if you haven't done so already. It helps us to keep bringing you these vlogs and we've got loads more lined up. We're actually itching to show you. And since we can't cruise over the summer, and nobody can, you might just enjoy them. Thank you. Mumbai is the second most populous city in India after Delhi and the seventh most populous in the world with 20 million inhabitants. It's also the wealthiest city in India, having more millionaires and billionaires living there than any other in this vast country. And you'd be hard pushed to tell though. It looked like a city falling apart with old crumbling buildings and decrepit vehicles cramming every inch of tarmac. Crossing the road here on our walking tour of the markets needed more than a little luck and confidence. It needed several Hail Marys and a guide who was prepared to just walk in front of the traffic to stop it. Brave or stupid? Hmm, I wouldn't like to say. A ride on the Mumbai Suburban Railway was also on our tour, which carries an estimated 7 million passengers per day. It has the highest passenger density of any urban railway system in the world. Trains are overcrowded during peak hours, with nine car trains designed to carry a maximum of 1,700 passengers, actually carrying around 4,500. London Underground at rush hour? <laughs> nah, that's like the Orient Express in comparison. We were in first class though, so never really got to experience those please get your sweaty bum off my face moments. Probably for the best. Going cheek to cheek with strangers isn't really my thing. And I had a pretty sensitive proximity sensor in before all this social distancing stuff. We hopped off to catch sight of the Dobie Gat Open Air Laundry, one of Mumbai's famous attractions. The washers, known as Dobies, work in the open to clean clothes and linens from Mumbai's hotels and hospitals. It was constructed in 1890, and for 18 to 20 hours each day, over 7,000 people flog, scrub, dye and bleach clothes on concrete wash pens. Then they dry them on ropes, neatly press them, and transport the garments to different parts of the city. Toby Gat achieved a Guinness Book of World Records entry under the most people hand washing clothes at a single location in 2011. After that and a bit more walking, we ended up at the smaller but much more plush end of the affluent scale in the five-star Taj Mahal Hotel. Situated next to the Gateway of India for an extremely posh lunch. Well, you have to have balance in an excursion, don't you? It really felt affluent inside this magnificent building and the lunch was absolutely spot on. The yawning chasm of wealth disparity in this country is like nothing I've ever seen. Well, until South Africa, but that's another story coming very soon. Also, if Azamara couldn't possibly squeeze in yet more highlights on this voyage, we had the White Knight as Amara's signature party which happens once on every voyage. You simply cannot fail to enjoy this event, where everyone is encouraged, but not obliged, to wear white clothes. In fact, if you squinted hard enough, all this white cloth blurring in the breeze looked a little like the Dobie Gat all over again. Here's a montage.
After all that excitement, we had two sea days to catch our breath, and yet here's another montage of everything we love about the Azamara Quest, because I don't think we can say all the nice things we want to say, so we'll show you instead. By the way, there's a full ship tour coming soon, so please subscribe for that. Muscat, the capital and largest city in Oman, squeezed into a flattish strip of land between the Mordor-esque western Al Hajar mountains and the shores of the Gulf of Oman in the Arabian Sea. As soon as we arrived, we embarked on another hotly anticipated excursion, a cruise along the shore in a traditional wooden dhow, an Arabian sailboat. I must admit, we lucked out on our particular boat. It was gorgeous and the seating areas, particularly at the back, with its long low cushions strewn on the carpeted floor, made for a relaxing and luxurious trip. These types of boats were traditionally used by traders to cross the seas with heavy items for sale. Goodness knows how they managed in heavy seas, as on our extremely calm day, its seemingly perfectly smooth round bottom rolled us all over the place. No stabilising tech in these vessels. What a great way to spend a morning, and we got to view the coastline, including an alternative view of the Royal Al Alam Palace, which proudly dominates the shoreline. Afterwards, the coach dropped us back into town along the front so we could explore the sprawling and labyrinthine Mutrasuk, one of Muscat's favourite tourist hotspots. It was such a charming area, full of stalls and shops selling colourful materials, souvenirs and daggers. Wait, daggers? <laughs> Crikey. We resisted buying anything though. Problem is always baggage allowance, suitcase weight and the UK's general aversion to carrying around daggers. Dubai loomed into view like a scene from an optimistic future. The spiky ultra-modern skyline with its central giant needle reached into the heavens and was juxtaposed by the retro chic of Her Eternal Majesty of the Seas, the QE2 in the foreground. It was a view I'd been waiting for, for many years, and it didn't disappoint. I took millions of pictures of basically the same scene. <laughs> Pointless doing that, isn't it? But, you know, you get caught in the moment, don't you? Soon we were off the quest and winging our way in a big plush Toyota Land Cruiser, heading for the desert for some fun in the dunes, followed by a Bedouin dinner under the stars. We were looking forward to this. It all sounded very destination immersion. Getting to our checkpoint with a swarm of other Land Cruisers, our driver, who was ever so slightly reckless, 
which is an understatement, and reminded me of British-based comedian Omid Jalali, flattened our tyres down from 40 PSI to 14 PSI, which enabled the car to grip better in the soft shifting sand. It also means that we shouldn't get stuck. They must get through a ton of tyres as I assume very quickly your tyre walls are going to be shredded to bits. And I tell you what was nearly shredded to bits, my insides. As when Omid let rip on the dunes, we were thrown around like rag dolls in a tumble dryer. That bloke was a nutter. Filming it was a challenge too. And the built-in stabilisation on the GoPro doesn't really do justice to the sensory violence that was going on inside the car. Just when I thought I was going to redecorate this man's nearly new leather interior, we stopped and we stumbled out onto a sunset soaked June sea, just as you imagined it would look. From here we watched the sun go down, although some people were more interested in running up and down the dunes like ten year olds. Hmm, <laughs> each their own as they say. We found a good spot for some top draw Instagramming though. Hmm, <laughs> these guys were experts at it. And were in our Land Cruiser with us. When we got back in the car, my guts had just about recovered and I prayed that our escaped bank robbery getaway driver wasn't going to make another run for it and thankfully he drove like a normal person until we reached the Arabian Adventures site. Now, I don't really know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting this. And the area was quite large and there were hundreds of people there. It wasn't just Azamara guests, as we were expecting, but it was open to the general public bought here by one of the hundreds of four befores in the parking area. To make matters less immersive, we supposedly had a reserved seating and dining area for Azamara, but as the hundreds of non-Azamara people started to sit down in our area, our guide tried to tell them to move, but they refused. So we all ended up being scattered about the place, either at the back, furthest from the stage, or with no seat at all. It was all a bit shambolic. We found a place to sit eventually, and queued for some food, and it all seemed very much like a theme park rather than a genuine, authentic Bedouin dinner experience. And the entertainment was three acts, so you'd all expect to see on something like Virgin Voyages rather than an intimate Bedouin evening under the stars. A fire eater, a man who span around the stage a lot, and I mean a lot, and a belly dancer. Dancing with a belly. Something that did live up to the expectation, however, was Azamara's signature chocolate buffet, their deadliest foodie spread of the entire trip, which was held in the central area of the ship outside the shops and wrapped around the giant staircase. What a wonderfully sweet end to a wonderfully sweet 17-night adventure. It couldn't have finished more perfectly. Well, we're nearly at the end of this Voyage Vlog series and we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we did making it for you. There was so much more to Dubai than we've got time to fit in here and we extended our stay another day by booking a room at the QE2 Hotel. You can catch that in our companion video by clicking the link in the top right corner now. We'll leave you with a short montage of our entire trip including Dubai as we may not do a video specifically on it but we have plenty of clips we don't want to go to waste. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you give Azamara some serious thought if you're interested in doing the spice route they pack in so much more than any other cruise line into their itineraries and you won't be disappointed. Their much advertised focus on destination immersion is fully justified here. You come away feeling like you've not just had a great cruise, 
on an exceptionally friendly ship, but you've had the chance to really get under the skin of the places you've visited. And that makes it a double win for us and many others that come back time and time again. Please consider subscribing as we have even more As Amazing Adventures coming up in our Azamara World series that you won't want to miss. Until then, thank you for making it through. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon.